this video we will discuss about various signal isolation techniques so why signal isolation and what is signal isolation so signal isolation is a method of physically and electrically separating two distinct parts of the instrument or circuit so when the term isolation is used with instruments or circuits it uh, refers to the electrical isolation which means that there is no direct flow of the current between the two parts of the circuit it means there is an isolation between each other so there are several advantages of uh, electrical isolation so um, they are uh, uh, protection to the user and also uh, the circuit from uh, damage uh, because of the high voltages and it is um, offering uh, isolation will offering high common mode rejection ratio and isolation will break the ground groups and this is especially more important for improving the measurement accuracy of the signal when we are uh, measuring at the trace levels so isolation is useful for applications that require detection of the low level differential signals in the presence of high level noise and high I mean, common mode voltages application that require very high impedance part between different grounds so to avoid interference currents this will be seen in the coming slides an application that require mutual protection to the circuit and also um, the person from a possible um, um, effect uh, that is may be caused by the high voltage so examples that are um, applications example applications that will use this isolation is data acquisition medical monitoring motor control and remote sensing etc uh, this is a typical block diagram of a data acquisition system so uh, the um, physical phenomenon uh, block which uh, is the actual physical parameter that is to be measured and there is a transducer that will convert this physical parameter to the electrical signal and the electrical signal to signal conditioning is fed to a measurement system and the signal conditioning part will consist of uh, the isolation part and the amplification part or any linearization required that it uh, includes in this and also the filtering part so if you see uh, the voltage uh, source and the measurement so the voltage source as shown in the below figure it can be a grounded signal or it can be a differential signal and also the measurement system it can be a single ended system means the signal uh, is measured with respect to the ground by the amplifier where it can be a differential uh, signal so um, instead of uh, signal that is measured uh, with respect to ground uh, in differential amplifier it is measured with respect to the two wires that is a differential signal is measured so advantage of differential signal measurement is it is having high common mode rejection ratio um, how it is achieving high common mode rejection ratio because the signal that is common to both uh, the wires will be cancelled out uh, will be removed by the differential amplifier uh, so here if you see uh, the signal measured by using a single ended system that is with respect to the ground the difference in voltage because uh, the uh, measurement system and uh, the source uh, signal uh, grounds will not be at the same potential so because of this the difference in voltages will be measured by the uh, single ended system measurement circuit so and this will give a very long value and accuracy will be affected uh, by the single ended system so wherever um, whereas if you see same signal is measured by using a differential amplifier if you see in the right side figure so the difference in voltages of this um, ground potential will uh, be acting as a common mode voltage to the source so and we are using this um, differential amplifier with a high common mode rejection ratio which will uh, remove this um, common mode voltage and the measurement signal vz is given by vs plus vc minus delta vz equal vs so we are accurately measuring the required signal vs by using the differential amplifier but there are some applications um, so that uh, uh, differential amplifier will not uh, meet the requirement of the uh, application if you see in the three figures first figure where, uh, where this is single ended system this is using a common ground so in, in, along with signal current there is a ground current that is flowing and it will um, affect the measurement and similarly if you see uh, the differential system so um, even though we are using a differential amplifier which will, which will nullify the common mode voltage of the, the difference in grounds so there are some interference um, current that is uh, um, 
will generate some noise in the system so if you see the v2 minus v1 will generating an interference current in the cable because of the cable finite resistance and it will affect the uh, measurement system so in order to avoid uh, this interference current so there should be an, uh, some high uh, impedance should be uh, introduced so this is achieved by using an isolation if you see an isolation so there is no direct flow of the current so there is a high resistance path is created between the measurement signal and uh, the uh, signal source so this will eliminate uh, the ground loops and it will improve the measurement accuracy so some of the basic concepts of isolation device are so an isolation device will process a signal either analog or digital signal from input to output across the isolation barrier so what are the parameters of the isolation barrier it should have a high breakdown voltage low dc leakage means it should have a high barrier resistance and low ac leakage that is it should have a low barrier capacity in the figure if you see the isolation voltage output is affected by common mode voltage and the isolation mode voltage vim isolation resistance that is barrier isolation decision or aso isolation barrier capacitance ciso so voltage output is given by v signal plus v common mode voltage by the common mode rejection ratio so the amplifier should have a high common mode rejection ratio in order to eliminate the common mode voltage and also it should have a high imrr so insulation mode rejection ratio so for eliminating the effect of insulation mode voltage so other thing other definitions of the common um, of the isolation uh, amplifier parameters are isolation voltage so isolation voltage also known as dielectric withstand voltage is selected according to the requirement of the application if the application requires a high dielectric strength requirement then we will go for high otherwise we can go for uh, low value so then isolation capacitance this is the parasitic capacitance of the isolation device that should be as low as possible because it forms an ac coupling across the barrier suppose if you see at 10 megahertz a barrier capacitance of 10 picofarad has an equivalent resistance of 1.6 kilo ohm and instead of isolation that is instead of high impedance this carrier this um, capacitance will create a low impedance path and it will affect the measurement so this is one of the critical parameters then isolation mode rejection ratio is a measure of how well the isolation device will reject the effect of isolation mode voltage and common mode rejection ratio it measures how well the device rejects the common mode signals so there are different ways of achieving the isolation that is uh, by using magnetic coupling and by using opto couplers and by using capacitor coupling if you see the basic block diagram of an isolation amplifier, so the input signal is modulated, means it is converted uh, to a high frequency signal and across the barrier is sent to the other side of the measurement circuit and then there is a demodulator because you are converting the uh, low frequency signal to high frequency signal again uh, the demodulator will be there which will convert the high frequency signal to the high low frequency signal and is further fed to the output so this is different um, ways as you can see opto coupler is used for the um, optical isolation and transformer is used uh, for uh, magnetic isolation and uh, capacitor is used for uh, capacitor coupling or capacitor isolation so among the factors um, what are the which are to be considered uh, while selecting the type of the isolation is bandwidth and expected life that is time to failure or wear out and the size and power requirements so magnetic isolation is having a very long life and it's having a high withstand um, withstanding capacity to suggest and spikes then it's a continuous uh, voltage rating but as the signal but disadvantage with this is as the signal is uh, transferred by using a magnetic uh, fields so it may be susceptible to interference that is generating from the external magnetic fields so optical isolation is having high immunity to electrical and magnetic noise but what is the limiting factors is modest speed that is uh, speed power dissipation and uh, wear and capacitor isolation is having high immunity to magnetic noise um, like uh, magnetic isolation here the signal is uh, transferred by using electrical field so uh, it may be susceptible to electric uh, external electric field interferences so if you see the basic block diagram of a magnetic uh, coupling amplifier the signal is fed to a modulator and then transformer it is fed to demodulator and finally to the output in this case the power supply is also accelerated between the primary side that is a modulator side and demodulator side 
so um, so advantage of magnetic coupling is in addition to the signal isolation the power is also isolated by using the magnetic isolation uh, optical isolation the signal is uh, transferred by using the radiation electrical radiation so um, if you see the uh, figure so the auto transistor is there so whenever the signal current is passing through the um, uh, diode uh, the current uh, um, if it limits a light and it is sensed by the opto transistor so if you want an analog isolation so by using optocouplers the incoming signal voltage signal is converted to a frequency that is a pulse strain and then it is fed to the optocoupler and then other side uh, the pulse strain again it is converted to a voltage signal by using a v2f converter so analog isolation can be achieved by using optocouplers by using v2f converter and f2v converters so this is one type of uh, analog isolation that is achieved by using uh, um, optocouplers. So uh, isolation by using S2 coupling. Here the signal is coupled um, by using changing electric field to transmit the information across the isolation barrier. So digital isolated means digital signals, digital signals, uh, um, silicon and electric capacitors are commonly used in capacitor coupling. So advantage of capacitor coupling is, so it is, uh, they are very cheap and it is having uh, immunity to the external uh, magnetic field interference. If you, um, see uh, in the blue block diagramming, the signal is a transmit TIXIN signal is transmitted to the rx i out um, by using on off shift uh, on off keying so whenever uh, um, the signal is present the oscillator will convert that signal to a high frequency signal and is fed across uh, the capacitor barrier and the receiving uh, detector will detect this high frequency signal and it will uh, um, convert that information to the required signals so this is uh, one block, uh, one uh, um, arrangement for the capacitor isolation technique. So if you see the comparison, um, the capacitor inductor and isolation, capacitor is having fast and uh, fast data transmission rate, and it also susceptible to the magnet. It is also less um, affected by the magnetic field interferences, but it is susceptible to the electric field interferences. Similarly, if you see inductive isolation is having fast uh, data transmission rate and electric uh, field interference immunity is the advantages and disadvantage is susceptible to magnetic uh, field interference and optical isolation is having electrical magnetic field interference immunity advantage but uh, disadvantage is lower speed and uh, higher power dissipation and wear out. These are the typical applications of um, how the signal is uh, isolated uh, by using a digital isolator. The 4 to 20 milliampere signal is converted uh, to uh, digital signal, then it is um, fed through digital isolator to the microcontroller unit. And in the right side, if you see the ADC signal, which is um, all the available ADC chips are supporting I2C, means digital protocols, I2C and SPA protocols, where the uh, required analog information is converted to a serial pulse train, which can be fed to the controllers by using a simple digital isolators. This is a typical application that requiring analog isolation. Thank you for watching my video.